Number 69. Outline the steps needed to solve the following problem, then do the calculations. Ether, which is C2H52O, which was originally used as an anesthetic but has been replaced by safer and more effective medications, is prepared by the reaction of ethanol with sulfuric acid. And here is the equation, okay? So now the question is, what is the percent yield of ether if 1.17 liters, and it gives us the density of 0.7134 grams per mils, is isolated from the reaction of 1.500 liters of ethanol, which is C2H5OH, and then they gave me the density of that compound, right? Okay, so if you know me by now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this equation because we can't do anything without a nice, big, balanced equation. So in this case, they told us that we had two C2H5OHs, that's the ethanol, plus sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4. When they come together, it will produce the ether, right, which is C2H52O. And then we get this, like, hydrate. We get sulfuric acid hydrate. H2SO4, and then this dot means that it's a hydrate, and then we have it as H2O. Okay, now can I... Beautiful. Now, I already see coefficients, right? I see that there's a 2 in front of here, so I'm going to assume that this is balanced already, but you could always pause the video just to check and see if the equation is balanced, but usually if they give you coefficients, it's pretty much known that it's balanced. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to write down what I have of each. Now, they're telling me that I had 1.500 liters of the ethanol to start with. So here's the ethanol. So I'm going to say I have 1.500 liters, and they give me a density of that value. So D equals 0 0.7894 grams per mil. Okay. Now, the question is, what is the percent yield of ether? This is the ether right here, right? And they told us that 1.17 liters was isolated. They're talking as if, you know, whoever did this experiment, the ether was actually isolated in an experiment. And if they give you an amount, in this case, 1.17 liters was actually isolated, right? This 1.17 is an actual yield. Now, if we just go back to the percent yield formula, which is this formula right here, let me just make it a little smaller, right? They're basically asking for this percent yield. So this is the end of the, the game, right? We need to get this number. Percent yield is always actual yield divided by theoretical yield. They told me that we actually isolated 1.17 liters, right? So I know the actual yield. The whole thing I got to do in this case is I have to find the theoretical yield of the ether. So I have to find out what this number is if I do the math. A theoretical yield is just doing stoichiometry, grams to moles to moles to grams, in order to get a theoretical value. If no mistakes happen, there was no errors. So I basically need to find out how much this is in grams. Well, Let's get started. Now they say outline the steps. So, I mean, maybe I'll write them down, but I will definitely talk them out. It's just going to be a lot here. So the first thing we have to do, right, is we have to find the grams of the ethanol, the C2H5OH, right? If I want to use my stoichiometry, I have to start in a unit of grams. So they gave me a liter right? And they gave me the density, but if I look at the density units, it's in grams per mil. So I have to first convert this liter into milliliters, right? And in order to convert liters into milliliters, it's always just multiplied by 1,000. So 1.500 uh, is the same thing as 1,500 milliliters, right? Okay, now we're going to do the density formula, right? Because I have a density, I have a volume, let's solve for the mass. And remember, D equals M over V. So if I just wanted to solve for the mass, which is what we want to do here, I just have to 
cross multiply, right? Mass is equal to d times v. So the mass is going to be the density, 0 0.7894, and then times by the 1500. Let's see. Where is calci? Calci. Here, here's my calci. Okay, so in the calculator, I get 0 0.7894 times 1500. And this is the amount of grams that I now have. So the mass of the ethanol that I'm going to start with is 1,184.1. I will not round in this case because this isn't the final answer. So I found out step one, and now I know that I'm starting off with 1,184.1 grams of, and if I can just move this out, right? It's not going to be grams of A anymore. It's going to be the compound, right? I'm just going to cater this to what we need. C2H5OH. So I'm just going to erase this. So if you need this, just pause the video. But goodbye. <laughs> you are the weakest link. Goodbye. Um, so from here, we could always go from grams of ethanol to moles of the ethanol, C2H5OH. And then I can convert convert to moles of the thing that I want. In this case, it's the ether, right? So I'm going to get to the moles of the ether, C2H5O, and then from there I could finally get the grams of the ether. Cool. So let's see something here. Okay. So this is my this is my little road map that I'm going to use. I'll put this up here. Okay, perfect. And now let's do our conversion, right? Because this is just stoichiometry. Now we've done tons of problems like this. So always start with what you're given, 1,184.1. 1, 1, and now I'll just color code this. This is grams of C2H5OH. You don't want grams anymore. So remember, we just make a ratio, put the grams, of the C2H5OH on the bottom, and we're going to moles. So mole of C2H5OH on the top. Now remember guys, if it's a gram to mole conversion of the same compound, that's always the periodic table. So we gotta get our periodic tables out. And when we do that conversion, remember it's always one mole of this, equals the mass on the periodic table. So I'm just going to calculate what the mass is of ethanol. I have two carbons, so it times that by roughly 12, plus five hydrogens, okay, plus one oxygen, so that's 16, and then plus another hydrogen. So I get roughly 46.068. Cancel out the unit grams, and now we're at the unit moles. So let's keep going. I don't want this unit anymore. I'm going to keep making my ratio. I'm going to throw moles of C2H5OH down at the bottom because I don't want it anymore. And I just look over to see what's coming up next. I'm changing colors now. I'm now going to the mole of the ether. And in this case, remember, if you're going from, and let me just put this line over here, if you're going from a mole to mole of different compounds, that's when you use the balanced equation. So all we got to do is just find these on the periodic table and we just take the coefficients. So here's the ethanol in my balanced equation. I have two of them. And here is the ether. There is no number in front, which means that it's just one. So for every two moles of ethanols that I'm going to put into this equation, I will produce one mole of the ether. And then that cancels out. We're almost there, guys. We just need to get the grams. So one more conversion. Throw the moles down on the bottom because you don't want that anymore. And now you want grams. And we're kind of going back to what we did in the beginning. If it's a gram to mole conversion of the same compound, that's using the periodic table. And remember, if you're using the periodic table, it's always one mole. So wherever the word mole is, you put a one there. 
Now I just got to go on the periodic table to figure this out. Now take note, you really have four hydrogens and sorry, you have four carbons and 10 hydrogens. So let's see, I have four carbons, okay, plus 10 hydrogens. And I got one oxygen in ether, so plus 16. So this roughly weighs 74.12. Okay, cancel the units out that you can. We're left with grams, right? And this that we just found, this is the theoretical yield. So I am finding out the bottom answer of the percent yield. So that's basically what step two is. We basically just did step two. All we got to do is calculate it. We're going to find, I'm going to call it the TY. TY is theoretical yield. So maybe I'll just put that here just so that you could reference it. TY theoretical yield of the ether. So let's just calculate it. Um, yeah, 1,184.1 1, times 74.12. I'm going to divide that by 46.068, and then I'm going to divide it by 2. So I get roughly 952.56 we'll grams of the ether. So C2H52O. Okay. Now, we're almost there, guys, right? First off, Pause the video if you need any of this work, but this is all going away, okay? The only thing we need right now is we just need this number. So I'm gonna blow everything else, you know, away. I'm gonna just erase it. So sad to go, but it's gotta go. Just so that, you know, it's not, not as messy. Oop, hold on, I don't wanna get rid of that. So let's see here. Oh, not bad, okay. So if I bring back my theoretical yield formula, this number was the theoretical yield. So I now know the bottom number, 952.56 grams of the ether. That means that if this was a perfect world, we should have produced 952.56 grams of the ether, which is C2H520. But there's always going to be errors, and that's totally okay, right? That's why we have actual yields. But if we're using grams in the denominator, I gotta use grams for the top number. But they gave me a liter value. So it's basically what I have to do here, what I did before, I have to do it again. So that's step number three. We have to find the actual yield in grams. So let's just do that as a side note. They told me that I had 1.17 liters and they told me that we had a density of 0.7134 grams per mil. Well, here's the problem again, right guys? The density is in mils, but they gave me a liter. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna convert that into mils, right? Liters to mils, we know that conversion, just times that by a thousand. So just move the decimal place over to the left, actually to the right three times. So one, two, three, so it should be one, one, seven, zero, 1,170. Yeah, okay? And then I'm gonna use this volume, I'm gonna use this density to solve for the mass. Remember, mass equals density times volume. So, 0 0.7134 times 1170. What's the mass that we get? 0.7134. I get 834.678 grams. This is my actual yield of the ether. So basically 1.17 liters is the same as 834.678 grams. And that's the number on the top. And maybe I'll put that in red, I guess, right? And do you see how there was some error, right? 
the theoretical yield was 950 and we got 834. So there was some error that produced us a lower amount, but that's okay. That's, that's life, right? Now I'm just going to calculate the percent yield. So the percent yield is just 834.678 divided by 952.56. I don't really put the units in because I know that we have the same units, right? That was the whole thing here. And that's basically step number four is find the percent yield if we wanted to outline them. Long process, guys but we got this. So the percent yield is whatever this is. This number divided by 952.56, and then I'm gonna multiply by 100. Um, I'm looking back at the question, I see that there's like the lowest is three sig figs right here. So I'm just gonna do three sig figs. So 87.6 percent. So you think of this as like a test grade, right? Whoever did this experiment did pretty well. Right, they got a 87%, roughly 88% out of a 100 total percent, right? 100% is without any errors, and they came in with the 87.6. That's pretty good, all right? So thank you so much for viewing the video. This is the answer. What is the percent yield? 87.6%. And yeah, I hope you guys are doing well. Let me know in the comments if this helped you out, all right? Love talking to you guys. And let's keep studying hard, okay? I will see you in the next questions. Bye.